topic for this afternoon, the topic assigned to me is the minimum standard set for the security and privacy in processing. This is the gist of the compliance of the entire commission in terms of the, its regulatory function as a commission. In, uh, do you have any idea how is data being processed nowadays? In the digital economy, data is of, specific, is of strategic importance because in, uh, in social, economic, and uh, governmental activities, production of data is very enormous. With the introduction of cloud computing, Internet of Things, big data, as well as the interconnectivity using the 5G networks, uh, the production of personal information is so enormous that it has more benefits than a liability for all uh, stakeholders. So in other words, the greatest concern nowadays is the use of data and who will process the, the data, the storage of data, and how willingness uh, we are in terms of uh, uh, propagating the data that is being used. So for this afternoon's presentation, I'll be based my uh, minimum standard on the NIMITI Privacy Management Accountability Network. So this, uh, this, this refers to the maintenance of information security program based on the legal and the risk assessments, ongoing risk assessment. You will notice that in the, the words, the first words there, there is the word maintain and integrate. So in the word maintain, that's on the assumption that uh, all of your organization do have their existing um, uh, programs when it comes to data privacy. But when you say integrate, integrate data privacy into your existing policy. Let's start with the first uh, uh, option. Integrate data privacy risk into security risk assess assessment. A security risk assessment enables an organization to identify threats and associated vulnerabilities which have the potential to negatively impact the business. The security risk assessment address all departments and computer systems within the organization, including those that collect, process, store, and transmit data. Normally, in your respective organizations, you have your uh, security risk assessment. However, integrating data privacy will enable you to further explore the possibility of having a more specific uh, guidelines when it comes to data privacy. Second is integrate data privacy into an information security policy. An organization do have their security policy, do have our quality policy, but in, uh, uh, in uh, integrating data privacy, it requires a, uh, it explains the who and the why, but not how the processing of data. So a security policy is also a high level statement which clarifies the direction of and support for information security. It's supported by standards, guidelines, and operational procedures which explain in detail how to execute against the policy requirements. So how to integrate a, how to integrate the data privacy into your security policy? First, you identify who the persons who will be the key roles in the protection of the data privacy within the organization. It ex also explains why this data has to be protected in its totality within the organization. Next, maintain technical security measures. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of the organizations here have their own security measures like firewall, intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, and so on and so forth. So uh, if, you maintain a, uh, if you maintain technical security measures, it safeguards the organization to attacks from external and internal uh, uh, risk. The technical security measures consist of hardware and software controls organizations used to provide automated protection to the system and application. Some examples of technical security measures include the following. Maintain measures to encrypt personal data. As mentioned earlier, there are, there are several encryption methods, uh, encryption, of the, um, encryption methods that we use, like for example, the Advanced Encryption Standard 256, which is, really by, which is uh, widely used internationally. However, there are, sem there are several uh, encryption standards that do not conform with the, with the right information security that, that we have. 
For example, a bulk of data is uh, was encrypted using AES 256. But technically, uh, the, the concept about encryption is that uh, there's a certain algorithm that will be applied to the data so that uh, for you to be able to process it and, and read it, you need to decrypt it. But uh, what if the entire database was be, which has been encrypted and decrypted? So what is your remedy for that? So in some instances, another security for encryption is that you break the data into half, separating, uh, let's say for example, the name, address, birthday, into the other parts of the uh, personal information and applying two different algorithms for the encryption of data. In that case, if the other half was stolen or hacked, no, definitely it will not be correlated to the other half of the entire data. Okay, so do not encrypt your data as a whole, encrypt your data piece by piece. <coughs> Maintain procedures to restrict access to personal information. Access to personal data is restricted to employees and users with legitimate business need. This includes controls to the user provisioning, like adding, modifying, and deleting user profiles. Imagine a company uh, where in all the types of employees have their access to the database, including adding, deleting, and modifying information. I'm sure most of most of the organizations here have this uh, have this uh, uh, secure data privacy policy that allows only certain kind of individuals that has user access for certain level of uh, of of uh, access to the data uh, to the personal information. Segregation of duties ensures that con that conflicts do not exist which could present a security or privacy risk. This privacy management activity will focus on the privacy specific aspects of managing the personal data. Well, aside from managing the network, managing the software, you can also integrate data privacy into a corporate security policy. This includes the physical uh, premises and hard assets of the company. It includes the, CC, the use of CCTV, security guards, protective barriers, locks, access controls, other techniques to protect physical assets. And in addition, there should be certain level of security, uh, sec security uh, passage inside the vicinity of your respective organization. Next. Maintain human resource security measures. This includes the training and awareness program that the company or the organization must, must, uh, must have in order for you to have a secure environment when it comes to data privacy. Uh, it starts with hiring people, and in terms of uh, this uh, hiring of people, uh, you should have, a, you should have a, uh, a continuous training and awareness program, especially on data privacy. Okay, imagine a, a, a new employee uh, in the company, pumasok siya, tapos he has his key card, then somebody asks him to if, if I can enter this premises because I've lost my card. In the, in the absence of a training and awareness program, probably this new employee might be able to have access to that particular person who may be an intruder or simply just want to uh, get into the, the, the company premises. Next, integrate data privacy into business continuity plans. An organization maintains a business continuity plan that identifies the organization exposure to internal and external threats, defines how the organization recovers from an incident while maintaining confidentiality and integrity of personal data. Imagine your organization got burned in a fire, then wala kayo continuity measures. So where will you get your data? Where will you get the programs? Where will you get the hardware and software? How will you, restore, how will you restore everything in terms of uh, business continuity processes? So it's very important that uh, uh, continuity plans for business must take into consideration in order, for, in order for you to preserve the data within the organization. Next is maintain a data loss prevention strategy. 
data loss prevention strategy. Data loss prevention is a control process or strategy that governs the, the protection of sensitive information in all its forms. The traditional scope of DLP strategy is to prevent the unauthorized disclosure of data in transit by providing visibility into access and transmission. For example, you have a data, you have a data and you want to transmit it elsewhere. How would you know that the data is being transmitted smoothly or being sent to the right authority or to the right person when it comes to transmission of data? A very good example of this is the, uh, is the uh, remember our card for frequent shoppers? Once we swipe our card, who wouldn't know saan na pupunta yung ating data, sino ang nakaka-receive ng data, and what information are being received by the recipient of this data. That should be the, uh, that should be the main focus for this, is the transmission of data, the visibility, not the literal visibility, but the visibility in terms of, as a data subject, you, you should know how your data is being sent to other parties with, or outside the organization. Next, conduct regular testing of data security posture. Based on the organization security risk assessment, a periodic test of the organization security posture is conducted. You should identify vulnerabilities. And once they identify the vulnerabilities, the vulnerabilities should become a threat. Uh, should, be, uh, the, the, should, uh, should, uh, should the flow of vulnerability be uncovered, it's classified into a threat level for organization to remedy and correct as per the organization patch and vulnerability strategy. So testing is part of it. Uh, penetration testing is also part of, of, of this uh, process. And uh, if you detect one, uh, you should apply it as a threat and you should act on it based on the existing security policy of the organization. Lastly, this was the question earlier, maintain a security certification. An organization establishes and engages with the quick with a qualified third party to provide an independent evaluation of controls that cover security, availability, processing, integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. Although ISO 27001 or 27018 does not, uh, is not an assurance that uh, you're compliant with the regulation or the mandate of the, uh, the National Privacy Commission, it is somehow an assurance that uh, you're partially complied, as mentioned earlier by uh, Deputy Commissioner Dolly Mapa. So implementing ISO 27001 is the right way to, to forward and ensure the security of an organization. However, actually being secure, it is necessary to develop a culture of valuing information and protecting it through a strong management commitment to information security, individual ownership and responsibility for information security, and lastly, effective information security, education and awareness. In summary, the, uh, the maintenance of the information security lies on the how the personal data is being preserved to to protect its uh, integrity and availability in general when you come up with your uh, maintenance program for information security you should remember three things first there should be a policy then the policy can be trimmed down into standards and standards can be trimmed down into procedures okay so with that, uh, as mentioned by uh, Tony Jam, we will entertain questions after the last uh, uh, presenter this afternoon. Thank you very much.